Hello and welcome to the International Daily Roundup by People's Dispatch, where we bring you major news developments from around the world. Our headlines, Palestinians take part in general strike against ongoing Israeli bombing of Gaza. South African court postpones bail hearing of Abhalali Basim Ajindolo activists. Colombian government rejects national strike's demand to end police violence. And in our video section, we take a look at the state violence and disappearances in the Biaxara Fluminense region of Brazil. A general strike was held across the occupied Palestinian territories and with Israel on May 18th. The call was issued to protest Israel's bombing on the Gaza Strip and the violence in the occupied East Jerusalem. The High Follow-up Committee and the Fatah General Committee were among the several political organizations and unions who joined the call. Palestinian prisoners also joined the strike stating that they would not interact with Israeli prison officials. Businesses and markets were shut down across cities including Haifa, Jaffa and Akka on Tuesday. The cities have repeatedly witnessed violent attacks on Palestinian homes and businesses by Zionist mobs. Hundreds of peoples gathered for a mass rally in the city of Ramallah in the West Bank to march towards Al Bireh. The rally was part of a mass dignity march organized on Tuesday. People also gathered in the city of Hebron after Israeli forces shot dead 31-year-old Islama Zahda at a checkpoint. Occupation forces also fired tear gas and sound bombs at protesters in the cities of Bethlehem and Beth El. As of 5.30 p.m. local time, the Palestinian Health Ministry reported 72, 31 gunshot wounds in the West Bank. Israeli forces also attacked protesters in the Damascus Gate area and Sheikh Jarrah in occupied East Jerusalem. Middle East Side reported that a 12-year-old Palestinian girl was shot with a rubber bullet in the neighborhood. Solidarity demonstrations were also held across different countries including Indonesia, Argentina and Pakistan. Protests were also scheduled across the U.S. and Miss U.S. where the Biden administration approved a 735 million arms sales dollar arms sales to Israel. Meanwhile, Israeli airstrikes in Shelling on Gaza continued on Tuesday morning. The bombings have killed at least 213 Palestinians, including 61 children so far. As reported by the UNOCHA, the attacks have displaced 58,000 Palestinians. As of May 18th, over 48,000 people are sheltered in 50 UNRWS schools across Gaza. The airstrikes have damaged roads and power lines and targeted homes and medical facilities. We now go to South Africa, where a court has postponed the bail hearings of three activists of South Africa's Shack Dwellers Movement or Abhalali Basse Majandolo. Deputy President Makafeli Bonono and Sini Komiya were arrested and remanded in police custody on May 4th. They were charged with the conspiracy to attempt murder for supposedly planning to assassinate a witness in another case. A day before the activists were set to appear in court, another ADA member, Mafi Fegasa, was charged with conspiracy to murder. The magistrate's court in Durban denied the bail applications of Bonona and Mia on May 13th and ordered Gaza into custody. Abhal Ali Basse Majundola reported that they were then taken to Westville Prison, a facility known for violence and corruption. The movement has highlighted serious irregularities in the police account. The state has claimed that the alleged murder, conspiracy to murder took place during a meeting held in the uh, Deconia Council of Churches on March 14th. The prosecution has two witness statements to support its claim. However, the meeting in question was held on March 21st and one of the accused, Siniko Mia, was not even present. Hundreds of Abhalali members have continued to protest outside the Durban court to demand the release of the activists. However, a hearing on their bail application was postponed on May 17th based on the prosecution's request. The hearing will now take place on May 20th. The movement has condemned the politically motivated attack and the deliberate delays in the court. It has also documented the arrest of hundreds of activists on fake charges over the years. Abhalali Basay Majundolo members have been tortured in police custody and have also faced attacks. The South African police have repeatedly refused to investigate these cases. In our next story, Colombian President Ivan Duque has ordered a maximum deployment of security forces to suppress the ongoing national strike. The announcement was made as members of the National Strike Committee were in a meeting with the government on May 17th. The committee announced that the meeting ended without an agreement as the government refused to provide guarantees for social protests. Prior to Monday's meeting, it had provided a document with over 100 demands including a withdrawal of the army and an end to police brutality. Since the start of the national strike on April 28th, at least 47 protesters have been killed by Colombian forces. Rights groups including Templares and Indipas have recorded 87 reported cases of sexual violence between April 28th and May 13th. Within this period, 379 people were reported disappeared, 1,470 were arrested and 54 were injured with firearms. Incidents of police violence were also reported on May 17th after the SMADO riot control units attacked a protest in the Kaoka department. Protesters in the Yumbo city were attacked with tear gas as a helicopter opened fire. Two protesters were killed and at least 24 were injured. 18 people have gone missing after they were arrested by SMAD. Several rights organizations have submitted an appeal in the ICC citing crimes against humanity and human rights violations in Colombia. The Inter-American Commission on Human Rights has also asked for permission to verify the human rights situation in the country. And for our final story, we go to the Bexada Fluminense region in Brazil. Located in Rio de Janeiro, the region accounts for 60% of the disappearances in the state. The families of the missing and murdered children have denounced the role of the police and the long delays in justice. 
Here is a video from a partners in Brazil de Fato on the situation in the area. 60% of the cases of missing persons in the state of Rio de Janeiro happen in Baixada Fluminense. The most recent occurrence is the disappearance of three boys in the city of Belfort Roxo on December 22, 2020. Lucas, Alexandre and Fernando left their homes to play soccer with friends and never came back. The children's whereabouts are still unknown. Human rights activists accompanying the case say that the civil police took too long to start the investigation and made serious mistakes, like ignoring surveillance footage that showed the boys at the same day they went missing. The material was later found by the public prosecutor's office. The public prosecutor looks at these videos and sees the boys walking around. How come the police have not seen it? For God's sake! So there are ludicrous mistakes. Are these mistakes by accident? No. There is no honest mistake for black, poor, favela dwellers. There is an ongoing policy of genocide. Each month, 10 people are reported missing in Baixada Fluminense. The pain experienced by the three boys' mothers is denounced by the network of mothers and relatives of victims of state violence in Baixada Fluminense. The network was created in 2005 after 29 people were killed by the military police in an incident that became known as the Baixada Massacre. Violence in the region hasn't decreased since then. In 2015, Nívia Raposo saw her 19-year-old son, Rodrigo Tavares, be killed on the doorsteps of their home. The young man was starting a career in the army and, according to his mother, was murdered by the police. I quickly understood that they blamed my son for being killed. Since the first moment we arrive at the police station, we are forced to understand that our kid, because he is black and a favela resident, is not a victim. He is seen as disposable, as someone who can be killed without any problem. Renata Rodrigues dos Santos dos Anguish is more recent. Her only daughter, seven-year-old Rebecca Beatriz, was murdered along with her four-year-old cousin, Emily, on December 4, 2020. The children were playing in front of the house when they were shot. The family says the shots came from police officers, but the police denies any involvement in the deaths. It's been really hard, especially this month. It's my birthday, there's Mother's Day. I don't even have much to say, because I feel like crying already. We are stronger together. I say this to all the moms that I meet. Do not give up. Our dead people have voices. That is my message to all the moms. Essa é a minha palavra que eu deixo para todas as mães. That's all we have time for today. We'll be back tomorrow with more news from around the world. Until then, keep watching People's Dispatch.